Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to be showing off a bunch of different ways to reduce your ping in Fortnite. This will include different hardware I recommend, Windows 10 optimizations, Ethernet tweaks, it will even include a cheeky trick that works on both old and new gen console. Now some of these tips I have covered in the past, some of you OGs might recognize them, however the fact that I'm repeating them means they are very very important and that you should listen to them. Watch the whole dang thing! So make sure to drop a like if this video helps you out, I cannot guarantee zero ping because that's just impossible, but I can guarantee this video will at least lower your ping and it will teach you a lot about how ping works in Fortnite. Thus, without further ado, let's get right on into it. Starting us all off, you guys need to be playing on Ethernet. I thought most people knew this and they knew that Wi-Fi was not that reliable, but then I come to find out my old trio teammate Forpsy, he plays on Wi-Fi. I actually remember we were playing FNCS Opens one week and he literally froze for a solid minute in game all because he's playing on Wi-Fi. That would never happen with Ethernet. Oh, and by the way, he actually died because of that. We didn't even qualify past round one. All because he plays on Wi-Fi, bro. <laughs> Anyways, all an Ethernet does is it directly connects your PC or your console to your router and or modem. An Ethernet cable alone, all it is is a tiny cable, by the way. It will not only make your connection way more stable so you don't lag out like Forbesy, you also will not get any packet loss unless you have a bad ISP, but it will actually improve your ping as well. Just think about it. If your PC or your console has a fast and secure connection to your router through your ethernet, your game will actually be able to ping the server quicker and therefore you'll get lower ping because that is what a ping is. It's literally your game pinging the server and how long that takes to get back in milliseconds. The big issue though is that not everyone is near their router and they actually cannot use an ethernet in their actual setup. I mean sure you can technically run like a 100 100 foot ethernet cable all throughout your house, maybe down the stairs and then attach it to the wall. It's just, in most cases, that is not practical at all. Your mom is gonna yell at you. And that was the issue that Forbesy faced. In order to solve this problem, there's two very good and basic solutions. Option number one is what's called a power line adapter. Essentially what a power line adapter does is it takes your ethernet and it transfers all that data through electricity. All you do is buy a pack of adapters off Amazon. My brother bought the Netgear ones, they weren't too expensive, between like 30 and $80 depending on the speeds, and then you use the adapters just like you would a normal ethernet. Take the ethernet plugged into your router, put it into one of the power line adapters, then put that into a wall socket right next to your router. From there, you're gonna go into your actual setup room, wherever that may be, you're gonna plug the other power line adapter into the wall socket, and then with the other ethernet, connect that to the power line adapter and that into your PC. The second and kind of the more preferred option if you have the money for it is what's called a mocha adapter. A mocha adapter works very similar to a power line adapter except instead of transferring the data through electricity, which is really not what that's meant for, you're going to use coaxial cables instead. You know those weird looking cables that you probably have in your TV or in the back of your cable box? That is what a coaxial cable is and it's actually meant to transfer data. If you have one of those in your room or plugged into your TV at the minute, then you could use it for really stable ethernet. You're going to need to buy two mocha adapters, which are more expensive than the power line adapters. You also may have to buy a coax splitter if you have one in your TV already. That way you could use it for the TV and through the mocha adapter, but then you'll set it up just like you would on the screen. One mocha adapter gets connected to your router through ethernet. That's the most basic part. Then that mocha adapter also gets connected to a coax near your router. After that, wherever your setup is, connect your other mocha adapter to the coax. All the coaxes in your house are connected. And finally, ethernet into that mocha adapter in your room and ethernet into into your PC or console. Mocha adapters are basically just as good as only using ethernet. Like I know you have to use ethernet with power line and mocha adapters anyways, but mocha adapters are very very fast and they will get you basically the same speed that you pay for from your ISP. In a lot of cases with your power line adapters, your speeds will not be that great. I know we pay for 100 up and 100 down and I think my brother was getting about 50 up and 50 down with his power line adapter, but he has no coax in his room and it was really the only option. It's also way cheaper. So again, you either have the power line adapter that does it through electricity, still better than Wi-Fi, don't get that wrong, but the Mocha adapter is better than that, and of course, the best is just a normal ethernet if it can reach your room. Just don't use Wi-Fi, okay? 
All right, so now we're gonna look at how you can optimize your ethernet settings. All of you guys should be at ethernet or at least planning to get one. What you're gonna do is type in device manager on your PC. This is what it looks like. It has all your different devices. You're gonna wanna click the drop down for network adapters. There's like a little gray arrow. And then this is gonna tell you what specific ethernet you actually have. So you can see I have an Intel ethernet. I also have Intel Wi-Fi. You guys might have either Intel killer. You might have have Broadcom, Realtek. I'm pretty sure I used to have Realtek. Whatever you have, just keep it in mind because we're basically gonna update the drivers even though this isn't how you do it. The whole point of updating the drivers is so you guys have all the same settings as me. We'll get to this in a minute, do not worry. But yeah, just remember which one you have because we're gonna go and update the drivers now. I'm gonna have the links for all of these down below. You can see there's Intel, there's Killer, Realtek. All of these are the different ethernet drivers that we're gonna download. Just click on the one that you have down below and we're gonna start with Intel, which you can see is called the Intel Network Adapter Driver for Windows 10. It has different versions at the top. There's like a little drop down that goes all the way back to version 22. Just make sure you're on the latest version. Mine is 26.4, but if you're watching in a year from now, it might be different and what you're gonna do is download either the 64 or the 32 Windows 10. Most of you guys should be on the 64-bit system. Click that. I accept the download is a zip file. I'm gonna move over here. I think you guys can see that, right? That's a zip file. I'm gonna right click. It's on my desktop and I'm gonna click extract here. Boom. It gave me all these different things like the license, the readme. What we actually care about is this, the Wired Pro X64. It's it's the only thing that's not like a PDF. We're gonna run that. And now it's installing. Welcome to the install wizard for Intel. What AdamX recommends is to just click the device drivers so you can uncheck these other ones. Make sure device drivers is checked though. That's it. Press next, install, wait for the little status. <laughs> To configure this device, open Windows Device Manager, finish. So now I'm on the latest Intel Ethernet driver. And that's what we wanted because we're gonna go change these settings in a second. But before that, I wanna show what you do for Killer and for Realtek. Killer actually got acquired, like Intel bought them out. So now this is what it looks like. It's called Intel Killer. And it's pretty much the same page, except it says Intel Killer Performance Suite. You're gonna go to the latest version. The download is right here. I think there's only a 64 bit version, yeah. You're gonna download that. I accept. It's gonna be the same thing, except it's just a .exe, so there's not a zip. We're gonna click that once it downloads. Preparing to install, even though I don't have an Intel Killer Ethernet. You guys see what I'm doing for you? And yeah, it says no compatible hardware was detected because I don't have Killer, so we'll cancel. And now we'll move on to the last one, the Realtek, which used to be the Ethernet I had. You're gonna scroll down on this page down in the description. Go to Windows. Windows and where it says Windows 10 auto installation program, you're gonna click on the little blue download icon. You're gonna have to put in an email. <laughs> it has my old usecodejarian at Gmail. You can put in a random email, it does not matter. And it's probably gonna make me, yep, it wants to see that I'm not a robot. Hopefully I pass it. Nice. And now it's downloading. It's also a .zip. Just like with Intel, I'm going to drag the Realtek file onto my desktop and then I'm gonna extract it. This time it's only a little install widget. That's the only thing you get from Realtek. I'm gonna click on it. It's probably looking for a Realtek Ethernet driver and it's gonna be like, bro, you don't even have that. Realtek Ethernet was not found. Um, yeah. So that's basically all you have to do. Realtek, Killer, Intel. And that's gonna lead us to the next part of the video, actually changing the settings. For this, again, we're gonna go down and type in device manager. We're basically gonna do the same thing we did before. Go down to network adapters, click on the actual ethernet that you have. So again, Intel ethernet controller, I'm going to right click, hit properties, and then we get all this stuff. We're gonna start with power management and we're gonna make sure that allow the computer to turn off this device to save power is turned off. We do not want this checked. Make sure it looks like mine. And then after that, we're gonna go to advanced, which is where we have 
have all of these settings, all of these beautiful settings that we are going to change and basically turn off anything power or power saving related. For example, energy efficient ethernet. We do not want that throttling our ethernet power and our data speed. We're gonna turn the value to off. You might have something called advanced EEE. That is what energy efficient ethernet is. If you have that, also turn that off. Look for something called green ethernet. Not sure if I have that. Gigabit light, turn that off as well. I'm gonna turn all of these wake settings off. So like wake from whatever that is on magic packet, disable. Wake on link settings, disable. The only other one that I want you guys to make sure you do not have messed up is speed and duplex. I remember in one video, I told you guys to put it to the highest value that you have on your internet. So mine was like 100 up and 100 down. And then a bunch of people who had like gigabit ethernet just copied me. They did not listen. And then they commented saying that I ruined their internet. Like, bro, you're not listening to the video. I recommend you guys either put it to the highest value. So one gigabyte full duplex or two and a half gigabytes full duplex. Or just leave it on auto negotiation because it's not going to mess up your internet that way. That's basically the advanced ethernet settings they should make your internet faster your ping lower and your overall gaming experience way way better the next kind of major tip for reducing your ping in Fortnite is to change your DNS server. Most of your networks that you use to play or just to go on the internet, they rely on your ISP's DNS. Your ISP, by the way, is your internet service provider. You might have like Comcast. And if you do have Comcast, I'm sorry for you. Very often, these ISP supplied DNS servers are slow. They don't really work too well. And this means it likely slows down your connection a lot. Therefore, what we're gonna do is switch the DNS server that we use for our PCs, or even for our console. I got you console guys covered. We're gonna switch it to a better, more efficient one. That way we can get better ping and way faster speeds. Here's how to do it. Down in the bottom left where we always go, type in view network connections until you see a little control panel. We're gonna click on that. And as you can see, this is what comes up. So I have Wi-Fi, but I disabled it because I use ethernet. We're gonna right click on the actual ethernet, go down to properties, bring this over. Over. Oh, I can't close that. And where it says Internet Protocol Version 4, you're going to double click that and you get this Internet Protocol Version 4 Properties window. We care about obtain a DNS server automatically because we're going to do it manually by hitting use the following DNS server addresses. And we're going to type in, you could use both, but I'm going to show two. The first one is Google's, which is eight. Click over, eight. Click over again, eight. And then eight. So it's four eights. Just make sure they're spaced out out like that and then the alternate is eight eight four four that is for google's dns server one of the best ones all you're gonna do is press ok and it should be good then the other one i'm gonna go back to the properties double click we're gonna try the cloudflare which is one one one, one. <laughs> that is for the preferred, the main DNS server. And then the secondary is one, zero, zero, one. Press OK. And remember, this works for console. I'm going to show that in a second. The two main ones were either 888. 88844 or this one 11111001 that's how you change your dns server on pc time for console as for how to do it on console don't worry i did not forget about you boys all you're gonna do it does not matter if you're on old or new gen is go to your settings find the network settings click advanced settings from there and then go to the dns settings what you're gonna do is instead of selecting the auto option which is what it's most likely on by default you're gonna hit manual and and then you're gonna put in the different DNS servers. You could try either of the two before. One of them likely is better than the other for you. Oh yeah, and for PlayStation, it is a bit different. You're gonna have to go to your network settings again, but this time click on the Wi-Fi or the ethernet that you're connected to and then hit advanced settings. This will show you an option for the DNS server if you scroll down a bit. And of course, do what the other video showed, click manual instead of auto and input the DNS server numbers. So again, it does not matter if you're using Wi-Fi or ethernet internet for this. It does not matter if you're on console or PC. You can change the DNS server for both and I promise you it should lower your ping or at least make your speeds a lot better. Go try it out! 
final thing you can do to reduce your ping in Fortnite, as you can see, I'm in my settings. This is what I'm going to do to end off the video is you're going to click out of your settings. You're going to go to the item shop. So just click that tab down to support a creator and type in what the my alarm just went off reminding you guys to use code Jarian. So yeah, type it in. Use code Jarian. It can potentially get you zero ping. Leave a like and enjoy. Overall guys, those are the best and most effective ways to reduce your ping in Fortnite Battle Royale. So if you guys enjoyed the video or you learned something new, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel somewhere down here, and to turn on my post notifications. Shout out to everyone on the screen for using code Jerry, and I appreciate each and every one of you so so much. Like I always say, whatever videos you guys want to see, let me know down below. Otherwise, that is it from me and I will see you guys in the next one. Later!